some authors like to write in a writing folder. Some authors I know write their stories on the computer. I like this way or my writing folder. And I have about 100 of these because I write every day. If you peeked inside, you might say, gee, it's a little sloppy. But to get okay. it in script. Sometimes in script, sometimes in different colors, sometimes in pencil. I cross out, I make big arrows, I make check marks. What I don't do, erase. I find if I erase a word, an idea may be gone forever. This is a great time to decide, should Biscuit say bow wow? Should he say arf arf? Meow meow? Woof woof? Yes. This is where I write my stories over and over and over <coughs> again until they are just right. What do you suppose I call this important book? Um, think about it a little more, it's okay. Notebook. Notebook works for me. What else can I call it? You can call it a story notebook. A story notebook? Yeah. A writing book. A writing book. Did you think of it? Yes. Storybook. Storybook works? Sure, these are great. Uh, idea. idea book. One more. Author book. Journal. Journal works. All of these wonderful names. I also like to call it a treasure keeper. <laughs> I like to think when we tell stories, they're treasures. So I write it over and over again, and then I must make it very neat. So I do type it on the... I can only read a line or two of the Spanish, but maybe we will. I do type it on the computer. Story is finished. I have to show it to someone really important. I give my story to my teacher. Only my teacher is called my editor. My editor reads my story, says, just write, or needs a little bit of work. And when we are both certain that that story is perfect, we now give my words to the illustrator. The illustrator reads my story, decides what to draw. Do I sit down right next to the illustrator and say, please draw this now? No. Never. In fact, most times I don't even meet the illustrator. Some of my books are illustrated quite far away, all over the world. So after I wrote Biscuit and a few other Biscuit books, I wrote the story of Biscuit's new trick, and guess what? I got to meet Pat Shorey's, the illustrator. I was really excited. And Pat said, is it true your daughter gave you the idea for the first book about Biscuit? What did I say? Yes. 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 Ask Laura, here's a picture of her, and I will tell you she was in the first grade, just like you. Ask Laura to help with some illustrations. And of course, Laura was excited. She said, yes. So they read my story together, and they learned that in Biscuit's new trick, Biscuit learns to fetch a ball. So Laura made believe. She pretended she was throwing a ball to Biscuit. And the illustrator, Pat, took out a camera and took a photograph of Laura. Watch what happened next. In the story, Biscuit's ball falls in the mud. Laura had to put both of her hands up on her head, and she had to say, Oh, no, not in the mud. Can you try that, please? Oh, no, not in the mud. Perfect. Took her picture. Did a good job with that one. But that doesn't look like a girl. Next.
next, Biscuit does fetch his ball, and it's covered in good old drippy mud. You got it. Now just imagine if Biscuit was coming to you with a soggy, wet, muddy ball. You can see it already. What kind of face would you make? Yeah, that's it. Exactly. Mm. We call this the yucky face. And she put her hand out a little bit and she said, Oh, Biscuit. Could you try that? Oh, Biscuit. Perfect. Illustrator looked at the pictures taken with the camera and began to draw. Oh, oh Biscuit. The very best illustrations get painted and colored in. <coughs> Where's the hair? Hair is not quite finished because, believe it or not, Pat didn't think this was perfect enough. And when we look at the book in a moment, I'll show you what was wrong here. Looks beautiful today.